let me record and I'm going to dive right in. So, oh, here's someone else. There's Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Um, so I want, okay, hold on. Let me, let me um, mute everyone just so I don't have a feedback. There we go. Okay. So tonight I'm going to talk about, well, first of all, I want to say if you didn't listen to the last call, I want you guys to remember if I say anything and you hear yourself saying, I know this already, or I already know to do this. I want you to stop and say, how can I apply this? Like, how can I make this work for me? Or I want you to say, I know this, but am I implementing it? Am I really executing it? And I also want you to know that I had a goal to take a shower before the team call, and that goal was not achieved, but it's okay. I'm gonna fail forward. I'm gonna move on with my day, because y'all love me greasy hair and all. I will shower after, I promise. Ooh, it's looking rough over here. Um, Okay, so tonight I want to talk about stopping the, the feeling of being overwhelmed when it comes to coaching, and I got some great advice from a podcast that I listened to, and I think that that's where some of the overwhelm starts, because I might listen to something, and Leslie might listen to something, and Megan might listen to something, and Blaine might listen to something, and then we all want to share it, and we're like, oh, you got to listen to this, and then this instant overwhelm sets in where it's like, I do not have time to listen to four podcasts, ladies, but we all want to share. So I thought this is the perfect podcast for me to share about because it's about being overwhelmed as a coach. Like, what do you plug into? What's the most important? I'm in too many groups. There's too many calls. Like there's too much training. There is like, there is, there is, there is. And it's just a reminder to talk about, um, Megan and I's favorite topic, the vital behaviors, and how until you get like your vital behaviors done, the rest of the stuff doesn't matter. Yes, personal development is a vital behavior, but that's like 10 minutes to 10 pages a day that you're reading in a book that we're reading, or you are jumping on a team call on Tuesday, but Bob Helig, the guy that I was listening to this podcast from Virtual Upline, who's great, He's like, but do you, if you are asking your team to plug in to your call and Team Courage call and the National Wake Up call and new coach training calls, like all of a sudden they've spent like five hours doing nothing that's growing their business, quote unquote. Like, are you getting knowledge and PD and sucking it on? Yes, but you are not doing the activities like inviting or posting on social media and connecting with people that really truly are going to grow your business. Like if you spend, if I spent five years doing trainings and not actually ever inviting anyone, I wouldn't have a business. So those things have got to be our focus first is our vital behaviors. And then I, you need to pick one call to be on. I want you to pick this call. I want to see you. I want it to be us. Like I want us to grow together. I don't care if it's six people in here, a dozen people in here, 20 people on here. Like I want to do this together. And I feel like a small group is the best place to grow. Like, because you can ask questions, you can get to know the one-on-one -on -one people. Like, that's where I grew. I grew in a small team call. That's where I met Megan, like on a small team call. Like that's where I, and Team Courage wasn't the size that it was, is now five years ago. It was still big, but I, I met on a, a small team call and grew from that. Um, National Wake Up Call, if you have time, I think is a great added bonus. Like if you're in the car, I happen to have to go to a doctor's appointment twice a week that's 30 minutes away. So I know that I have an hour in the car twice a week. So for me, I'm like, I'm listening to a podcast that I then come back and share with you guys what I learned, or I'm listening to the National Wake Up Call. That's what I'm doing with my time. Like I'm not obviously not reading. I'm not um, listening to music. And sometimes I just need to listen to music. Like, to be honest, like if I'm on a long car trip, it's not like, oh, we have to do five hours of PD, Matthew, because he would kill me. And I'm sure Nancy's husband would kill her as well. That's why she has those handy headphones on, right? Um, so yeah, like so Matthew's like, no, like I, I, I have to not listen to something. Like I just have to zone out every once in a while, right? So 
I want you to pick a call to focus on. Ours is only every other week. And I was talking about this with Blaine today and I was like, you know, I would even be willing to make this a 30 minute call every week if, if people want to do that. And if they're like, no, that's too much overwhelm, but I don't know what else to plug into. I can give you the order of things that I would plug into, but I want this to be a priority because I will talk about the things that you want to talk about. Like hands down, you tell me what you want to talk about. That's what we'll talk about. Then if you have the extra time, you add in the additional calls, the additional trainings. Our new coach training right now, if you're in there, or reigniting your business, if you're in there, super short, super simple. We're keeping it down to like 10 minute videos, two to three times a week, super simple um, for this fact. Like I don't want anyone to feel overwhelmed. As you grow your business, I want you guys to remember that 80% of your business should be you like your vital behaviors in your business like you're inviting and those kind of things and 20 percent or less should be your team and you might be like i don't have a team yet well that's fine but as you grow and even as you grow one person and this is what i'm going to talk about next as you grow like one two people in your team and then all of a sudden you're like oh i should focus like half my time on them no you should focus 80% on your vital behaviors and growing your business and adding more people and serving more people and getting more people in groups and getting more people on your team. Because when you start to make that shift where, and I've done this, I've made all these mistakes where I'm like, oh, I, my team is getting so big, I need to help everyone. And then all of a sudden, 80% of my day, which might only be an hour, let's say it's 80 minutes because that's easier math. 80% 80 percent of my day, 100 minutes, sorry, 80 minutes are going to um, my team, and I'm like, oh, I only have 20 minutes left to get my invites done, to follow up on messages, to post, to see who's commenting on my post, those sort of things, and that's not enough time. Like, 80 minutes needs to be going to those behaviors, and 20 minutes needs to be going to checking on my team of what they need help with, so. That's a really good rule of thumb moving forward. 80 20 rule, just kind of like everything else in life, right? So, okay, so speaking of like, you're like, oh, I don't have any coaches on my team, or I don't really have a lot of challengers, or I have no challengers, or whatever. Um, when you have one challenger, and I don't care if they're active right now or not, like if you have one customer that has ever purchased from you, you have got to be faithful with that. And I have thrown this quote around in every group that I'm in, so maybe you've already seen it. But he said, this was the Bob Helig thing. He said, gratitude is the gateway drug to motivation. And I freaking love that quote. I was like, yes, like I could plaster that on my wall. Because, and what he went on to talk about is if you have got one person excited and committed to you, you have got to pour into them. Like, what are you doing for that challenger? Like, when you go to do your power hour, that person better be on your list to check in on, to see how their day is, to see what they're doing. I only have one person in my clean eating group. Oh my gosh, you guys all know I need ink, right? No, oh, that's a whole nother story. My computer won't stop telling me. Um, I need ink. Um, there, okay, there's one person in my clean eating group, and you know what? I'm making sure I poured into her. Day one, oh, she had food poisoning. That's awesome. I was like just writing her back and I was like, please don't tell me it was from your shake. Like that's all I don't want to hear. And she got food poisoning from like leftovers she ate or whatever. So out of commission day one, you know, after food poisoning, totally feel like crap on day two. And then like hasn't eaten in what, 48 hours. So totally binge ate tonight. I'm like, this is off to an amazing start with this woman. Um, but she is my person. I'm like, this is it. Like me and you clean eating group. We are rocking it. We are doing this together. Right. And people that I'm going to bring into my new April group, you know, people that I still have rocking the 80 day obsession, even though I had to get in there and be like, Hey, I had to pause the whole 80 day obsession thing, but I am totally cheering you on. I am here. I am supporting you. I'm doing what I can do. And I'm doing my own thing over here, my million day obsession. So gratitude is the gateway drug to motivation. And this goes back to an old quote of Danny Johnson's. Well, it's not Danny's, it's from the Bible, but 
you have to be faithful with the little things to be ruler over much. So if you do not take care of that one person, you will never be given more. If you are not grateful for that one challenger, you will never be given more. If you are not grateful for one person saying, yes, I want to be a coach on your team, you're never going to be given more. Like you have to be grateful for what you have to ever have a chance of getting more. So these were my big takeaways on that. Um, I said that really fast. I'm super impressed with myself. So then I will go on to the next topic I've been studying this week, which is, I think some of you joined after I said in the beginning when I was like, remember, if you're like, I know this, I know this, that's okay. You're going to say, what can I learn from this? Or I know this, but have I been implementing it? This is something that I have known for five years and have not truly implemented until recently. And I've been making it messy. I've been like, I'm just going to start because something that I have not done is have a clear, ideal customer avatar. Now, what does that mean? Your customer avatar is who you are selling to, who you are talking to. And the thing is, we, it's easy to say like, we sell something that would help everyone, right? We can help anyone. We can, young and old and wants to gain weight, wants to lose weight, yo-yo dieter to fitness fanatic, like we can help everyone. But the thing is, you can't help everyone. Like you have to have an avatar that you talk to. And you can have some success trying to talk to everyone, but if you understand your customer's deep fears and desires and essentials for essentially what they want, your business is going to run so much smoother. So like I said, this is something that I've got, I've got away with being a little more broad. I've had a general avatar. I've done this exercise before, and this is something we can dig into deeper for, I mean, there's not like a million people in the call. So if you write me one-on-one -on -one and you're like, help me dig into this deeper, I will be happy to do that. Um, so what is it? It's a single person who represents your ideal client. Always keep them in mind. Might be an actual customer you have or a master mix of customers. Who do you want to or intend to serve in your business? So it often will sound a lot like yourself. So that's completely normal. Um, mine often sounds like Kimberly five years ago when I started with Beachbody. Like I want to help her. So I, a lot of times, so when I started to really dig into this more this week, even though I'm going to be 40, I know you can't believe it, but my girl's 35 because I started five years ago and that's kind of who I feel like I'm talking to. So you have to get really specific. So I just brain dumped a list and I was like, and I, it should be even longer than this, but just brain dumping this week. I was like, she's 35. She's female. She's a mother. She's Christian. She drinks wine. She's married. She's overweight, probably 10 to 40 pounds. She's a stay at home mom. She's creative. She likes to have extra side money. So she tries to do side jobs. She's a yo-yo dieter. She's frustrated. She doesn't know what to eat. She's not motivated, but she does want to change. She does not feel sexy. Her clothes don't fit. She's tired, but bored needs to talk to more adults, she doesn't mind investing in herself, likes to travel, have fun, entertain, eat good food. Yes, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> so, um, or five years ago, but that's what you have to do. Like, who are you trying to help? Like, that's the person I'm trying, trying to help. And it gets so specific that this, it seems like you're eliminating people, but from everyone I've talked to, this is like the sweet spot. And I look at amazing, amazing coaches and this is what they do. I can tell they're talking to someone that's like a new mom or Megan, you might be talking to someone that like wants to yank their hair out because they have two and three year olds running the house. Like they're in a certain part of their life that that's what they're frustrated with. And then I'm also entering into this phase of turning 40 and having different changes with hormones and things like that. And so there's other things that you can have multiple avatars, but you need to be talking to one because when you go on Facebook, you are talking to this person. You are speaking to them. And I know Blaine had a great tip Thursday or, or well, I don't know what, what is that what day the tips are on Blaine? Wednesday, tip Wednesdays, um, Wednesdays. So she had, I think it was last week where she, no, that was the case. Anyways, it was in the last couple of weeks where she was like, you need to 
just talk to to a person instead of like if you're live like instead of like hey guys it's almost like you're talking to that person and to like name that person and you might have a customer already where you're like this is my ideal customer this is who I want to target and it doesn't have to be you like it for a long time I felt like I was targeting people much younger than me um I would say like Charlotte like I was talk talking to people that maybe were married but didn't have kids yet and then I just realized like I have just so much less in common with them like I don't because I have three crazy kids so I'm just in a different spot in my life but anyways so you have to understand their frustrations their fears know they are you know their fears are irrational but you know they are going through them and how can you help so knowing their deepest desires also allows you to demonstrate you have a bigger vision for them you believe in them you can help them you can get them where they want to go guys i have started doing this just in the last month like talking to my person like feel like you name your person like give her a hair color give her a bit emoji like have her be a person and talk to her and so when you get on social media you're more like listen maybe her name's Kimberly like you're like listen Kimberly like I know you're frustrated I know you're stuck like all the things that you know this person needs and you are going to connect with people on such a dip, deeper level and this is where it comes in that it doesn't matter if you have a hundred likes on your on your post, it doesn't matter if you have a hundred comments. And it, mat it matters if you have that one comment that's like, "Oh my God, you are in my head. Oh my God, I you totally understand. I I feel the same way." Like when you get comments like that get excited. I get so excited when people are like, "I feel the same way," and I'm like, "Yes, this person gets me." So. Um, that's what I've been studying for that. So I am talking really, really fast tonight. <laughs> Let me see if there's any questions. Me too. Every time I go go shopping, it's guaranteed our PD. Yes, I heard all those songs a million times. Don't like, oh my God, they play the same songs on the radio over and over. I love all that. I'm cooking. Sorry, running around. Okay. Um, any questions on that or building your avatar? Or, um, let me see what other notes I have on that real quick. No? Yes? Okay. Um, okay, this, this was a reminder that, trust me on this, your product might be able to serve everyone like I think ours is, um, but you need a, ne a niche or a niche, however you want to say it. Um, so, you know, st if you say stay-at-home moms and small business owners, that's even not small enough. That's still too broad. It has to be like stay-at-home moms or but specific, like, do they, do they, um, uh, like all the things that I said, like, what are they interested in? And I was always afraid to be like, well, like, is Christian making it too specific? Like, obviously I'll want, we'll work with someone that's not Christian. Like I've worked with people that aren't Christian and then start to pray. And I was really excited about that. So I don't want to eliminate that. But the thing is when you do this really specific niche of who you're trying to reach, you will reach people around the niche, like a nucleus that are like drawn to that. But I even look at like who I follow that I really like other beach body coaches and I can tell like maybe I'm not their niche, but I'm super attracted to them because of what they put out, like the vibe that they put out. So we might not be the same person. Like I follow a lot of people that have, um, um, like, young kid, like really young kids. And like my baby's about to turn 10. So I don't have really young kids, but I am attracted to kind of what, what they're going through, I guess. I don't know. So it, you'll still attract additional people. So, um, do you have any questions on that? I have a challenger avatar and a coach avatar. Yeah, I think that's good too. So you can have multiple, you can have multiple ones. It doesn't have to be the same person. And I think this is where I've kind of, you know, I'm just being completely honest where I've missed the mark with coaching sometimes thinking that my avatar had to be the same. Like I think Leslie brings up a good point. Like when you're talking about coaching, you might be talking about someone different. So everyone I described to you guys for my avatar for was for a customer. So when I'm looking now, I think really good customers turn into really good coaches, but I also know I have examples of someone like Leslie who joined as a coach. Like she went through the program as a coach. She didn't like go through the program as a customer and then decide to be a coach. And 
she's a perfect example of someone that I would want to bring on just like that. And then I have another example of someone like Blaine Phillips, who was a challenger for a very long time before I convinced her to coach. So she had to go through the process, lose the weight, like see that it worked for her before she was like ready to invite. So you're going to have people at different stages of that. Um, but I want to give a big shout out to Nancy, who had a great post today showing her breakfast, eating all her raw veggies for breakfast. And it was really good because there was a ton of engagement. It was, you know, like people talking about her breakfast and what she was doing or saying they were doing keto this or keto that. And she had great responses and like jumped in the new coach group to ask how to respond to them. And that's, that's like how you do it. So if you put a post up there and you're like, well, no one is commenting on it. It's not that people didn't like the post because I, I put a banging post up this week and no one liked it and no one commented on it because Facebook just hides it right away if it's not creating engagement right away. So if you get people commenting and you're commenting back and you're creating engagement, it's automatically going to be seen more. So I will tell you in instances like that where I'm like, um, well, this was a really good post and I, I think Facebook should give it another shot. I will delete the post and try again, like at another time, because I know it's not like people, I know no one's going to be like, I already saw this. I, I'm like, no, you didn't. No one saw this. No one saw this because if not, everyone would have freaking liked it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking in my head. So I will delete it. And I've done this a few times and I've gotten like better engagement, like at a better time, or I'm like, I, maybe I need like some kind of call to action or some kind of question to kind of spice it up. But I think this is when you also really get to like, if you know your avatar and who you're talking to, my people do not want a long, like, woe is me drawn out post. They want to laugh and they want to read something quick and they want you to like show a picture of your hot mess self. Like that, those are just my people. Like they're, you know, they're different. <laughs> so, um, all right. I have a challenge. Okay. Same thing. All right, guys. Well, this was super quick. Well, it wasn't quick. It was 30 minutes. I just talked the whole time, but, um, uh, oh, sorry. I lost my train of thought. I'm going to let you jump off and get on the team courage call if you choose. But if you missed the first part of the call, it was about overwhelm and how you don't need a million things in training. And I will say that, um, Stephanie, who is help leading the call, the next call, she's amazing. I love her. And she's actually who I'm going to, um, one of the coaches that I'm going to be leading my April group with. So I'm super excited because, um, we have lots in common. So she's wonderful. And Laura has an amazing story who she's also doing the call with. Laura had a stroke and was told like she wouldn't, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Megan, but she wouldn't like walk again, like definitely not run. And she immediately started T25 after her stroke and then like was in a marathon. Like she has the most amazing story, like how her comeback. So I feel like team calls are great for that, especially team courage calls because it's always different people and you're getting to know people. But you guys, my biggest tip for that is when you see someone that you connect with on a call, like if it's someone that's on here or you listen to speak, like send them a friend request and say, that call was great. Or this spoke to me. Like that's how you build relationships and make friends in this business. Like that's how I met Megan. Um, just by reaching out after a team call, like that's how you connect with people that might be at the same place as you and, and learn from each other and follow them on Facebook. Like it's, it's okay to like each other, each other pages and stuff like it, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You all, there's, there's plenty of, of people to go around. There's whatever. Well, how many people are there on the planet? Like 8 billion people. Like there's plenty of people that need our help. Don't worry about that at all. So I love you guys. Thanks for plugging in and jump on that team courage call if you can. And if you can't, you can always watch the recording and that's okay. Love you. Bye.